Hello, I have I am back from my trip, but I'm hopping on at the beginning here to say this trip is a bit different from my other ones. This one includes a night away. It includes a visit to Canterbury and an amazing fabric find. So stay tuned because there is lots in this episode, including the gorgeous place that I stayed as well. I really hope you enjoy. And I'm looking forward to taking you along with me. And like the other two, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. I have a vague plan, but that's it. everyone while I'm waiting for the barbecue briquettes to um, go grey so I can cook my dinner I thought I'd just hop on to, to point out what's behind me I decided for this edition of threading my way through Ken I would make it a little bit more of an adventure now I don't know if I've ever told you this but um, I quite like solo travelling. I did it for the first time in about 2016, so what's that, eight years ago. And on that occasion, I actually hired a mini camper van. It was a Toshiba Espace that was turned into a, a, a camper van. And I took myself around Norfolk. And the joy in not having to agree with anyone else what to have for dinner not to have to agree whether we turned left or right to avoid a, a, a traffic jam was something that I wasn't prepared for. It was new and alien and a bit scary because it was an automatic and I'd never driven an automatic. But no one was there to pay attention so I could go as slow and carefully as I liked. And it sparked in me something which meant over the years I've done it on various occasions. Sometimes it's been one night, sometimes up to five nights. I've driven to Scotland and stayed in various little sort of cabins and places like in near Edinburgh and then on the way back down in the Peak District. I've stayed in lovely little summer houses that if there was two of you, you'd be a bit irritated with each other. But perfect if there's one of you, you're supposed to fit two in. But I've been to Wales and stayed in a static caravan on a farm and gone to gorgeous beaches that I didn't know existed. I highly recommend if you've never done it, solo travel and if you've not done it before, start with the UK because you know the language, you know the roads, you know how to get around, you know how everything works and if you're not sure to start with, stay in a hotel for one night, try something but there is something about not having to please anyone else that is very liberating and as I say a little bit scary and I always choose things that make me feel comfortable um, and I always have either a paper or a book with me to read because if I'm somewhere on my own I don't feel uncomfortable but it is something that I wish I'd done sooner in my life and I'm sure there are some of you sat out there watching who have. Please leave your comments and suggestions below for tips for people who haven't but it is something I highly recommend. So for one night I am staying in this and um, original ones like these are still hard to find but there are some of them and this one has been very lovingly looked after and um, I'm very excited to stay in it although it's for two I think it would be tight and I have logs I have a campfire I'm just cooking my dinner outside I'm looking at an oak tree with lots of acorns on it and it's going to be a nice evening and pretty clear so I'm hoping to see some stars as well I'm going to sit and do some vlog planning. I didn't bring any hand sewn with me because I was packing light, 
but I will be doing some vlog planning and I've got a book too. <laughs> Canterbury. Now, I know Canterbury incredibly well. I went to Canterbury very regularly for the first two decades of my life. It's somewhere that my family know very well. I actually went to uni in Canterbury and it was a regular haunt for shopping as well. And after that, popping back. So I'll try and show you some of the good bits. Historically, there were fabric shops. I don't believe there are any anymore. Thank you to people who commented. But that doesn't mean we can't find fabric. I will be finding the charity shops. I will be searching out interesting things. There are some little back streets. I'll give you some snippets. There's some amazing history in Canterbury. And it is a great place to visit. So I'll try and show you some of the slightly alternative bits that you might not notice. And um, I'm sure I'll be able to find a place to get some fabric as well. So let's see what happens. Well everyone, I am back and um, Canterbury for me has quite a lot of personal history and it was quite interesting to go back there after quite a chunk of time to see what was still there and what was different and what was really interesting was there is a shop that must have been there at least 30 years which for any UK small business right now is massive but also any bricks and mortar business is massive. Years ago they were way way further down one of the high streets and then they moved to this more prominent position and I can't believe they're still there. If any of you are regular viewers or podcast listeners you will know that at one point in my teenage life I was a goth and Lucenda was a place where I used to buy things but I also used to make jewellery and I used to buy beads from them and my incense and I used to just love to wander around their shop. The shop has barely changed which is phenomenal and it was I didn't buy anything in there but it was so nice to revisit a place that well I just can't believe how long it's been there. <coughs> I would say something that is noticeably different now about Canterbury but also might be different about my shopping habits is keep away from the high street it is just full of the usual tut and stuff um you've got some great um you've got some amazing old buildings and I've hopefully you're seeing while I'm talking some of those and at one point and this was when I was at uni time team I think were in Canterbury because they were building a new bit of shopping and they unsurprisingly uncovered more Roman remains 
and actually the water stones which i'm not sure if it is where it used to be they opened up a, a little secret cupboard and we was able to see like a bit of the roman wall there is a significant amount of roman wall left in canterbury there is a castle but it is not in a great state but the castle is almost like the least interesting thing about Canterbury. You can walk along the Roman wall. You can go to the cathedral, which if you've never been, I highly recommend. I was really lucky when I was at uni that we had a path pass that meant we could get in because uh, we could cut through it. And also we went, the uni we went to was sort of affiliated with it. And I used to love and go and sit in the cloisters. It's a very calming, peaceful, spiritual place. And then I'd like to tell you about the Cricket House. Now, when I was a kid, we would often drive through this bit of Canterbury to see the Christmas lights on our way home from visiting family. And there is a building, it's a bit away from the main bit, but it's only a few minutes walk and it's definitely worth doing. And it's now down a bit there sort of promoting called the King's Mile. And this house is fully slanted and the door you can't put a traditional shaped door in it and my granddad my maternal granddad was a carpenter and at one point he fitted the new door to this building i love that it's still there i love that it's still a bookshop and that it hasn't really changed very much and i would say that bit of country is definitely worth a little walk there's various car parks around the town they are pricey now but if you want to go for a couple of hours wander i think they're worth it there is park and ride um and cheaper that's probably the word i want but if you only want to be a couple of hours then treat yourself to one of these car parks because you can meander through the little residential back streets and pop out at various points in canterbury if you sort of keep the cathedral to your left and keep walking you will always sort of pop out somewhere and my other bit of advice is if you go in the summer go early because it will fill up with tourists particularly school trips even in the summer holidays really fast and it's not pleasant and so either go off season or like I did, I was there at 9am. Some things hadn't opened, but it gave me the chance to have a nice peaceful wander and then go back round to the things that I wanted to go to. Going to things I wanted to go to. Well, I knew there wasn't any more. This is very sad, a fabric shop in Canterbury, but there is still fabric to be found. And I, on my Tenderton trip, had gone to that gorgeous pilgrim's hospice retro vintage shop which had haberdasher in it and she told me there was one in canterbury so i'd looked it up they have a whole little room full of patterns fabric haberdashery tea towels tablecloths i was there the second it opened and it was really delightful shop and the man running it on that day was gorgeous and had an amazing suit on as well And next door was De Melza, um charity shop and they had lots of duvets and things as well. What was quite interesting was a lot of the other charity shops in Canterbury did not have like the hanging rails with like duvets curtains on but those two next to each other did and that vintage retro shop you can get vintage clothing for a bit more than charity shop prices but way less than some of the other retro shops in Canterbury because I had a look in some of them and they were selling shirts for £38 as opposed to what you could find in there. I will be donating some of my vintage clothes to them that I no longer wear because I'd much rather they went somewhere like that. So fabric was found and I'm going to show you but don't go away after I've shown you that because I found more fabric on my way home so let me show you what i found in canterbury we will start with the what i found in the uh pilgrim's hospice vintage retro they even have their own lovely labels like this so this was 9.95 and obviously it is fabric 
it feels cotton to me let's undo it look at that there's a lot here in fact i can't tell how much there is here here we go look, let's get a bit of it out so you can see look look at that look but i thought this would make a gorgeous pair of trousers dress linings all sorts but well i will work out how much is there but not right this second and then i picked up this now this is clearly a remnant but look at this it feels a bit wool a bit sort of canvasy or hessian but i thought for the outside of a bag or something like that and there was lots of pieces so it's obviously the leftovers of somebody's project but it's £3.50 and they did say it was 18 inch by 56 inch plus some extra and then I found a St Michael's pillowcase now I have the green design of this already and I couldn't resist getting the blue because this makes lovely bias binding it's really art deco and I've seen it elsewhere and I just I love that and then this little sort of like mini tablecloth so this was three pounds and I thought that would make gorgeous back to a blouse or jacket with another colour underneath now and who doesn't need some nice poppers and then I got this webbing that was a pound Then I went into Demel's and next door. They did have quite a lot of duvets and things, but not any that were for me on this occasion. But I did go downstairs and find this man's shirt. So I thought this would make great bias binding because you get like the interesting parts of this. And then I got this yellow one, which also was two pound fifty. Now this one I'm sure is cotton linen. Yep, 55% linen, 45% cotton. You get the hang of what these fabrics feel like, don't you? And look. So, that's what I found in Canterbury. And I did see an amazing vintage shirt, but I stopped myself. But I didn't want to stop there. I This was at my time to do a really decent trip. So, I headed across Kent at this point again really nice drive not touching a single motorway or dual carriageway and took myself to Smarden. now Smarden is not far from Tenterden but when I went to Tenterden I didn't know about this and thank you to whoever left me a comment on one of the previous vlogs episodes because in Smarden, and it's just outside the main little centre is um a place called the little shop of fabrics that is an understatement it is not little <laughs> it has free parking it is well signposted in terms of follow google and then the sign is there to help you get round to it what a find if you are ever heading down into kent you could definitely tie this in with a trip to tenterden or come off the M20, go there and come back on. If you're going down to the Euro Tunnel or on your way back, you need to tie in a visit to this place. So I had no idea and I hadn't looked it up online other than to find where it was and someone had said it's worth going to. Worth going to? Oh my goodness, what a find and thank you to whoever told me because 
you go inside and you walk down this alleyway to a door on the left so you're like is it is it am i here am i here but there's quite a few cars in the car park so i was like okay and you go inside and you're confronted by this gorgeous selection of quilting fabrics. So the first thing I always do is ask permission to film um, because I always say I won't film other people, but can I film the shop and explain what I'm doing? And she said, of course you can. So we've got all of down here in a U shape and upstairs and a workshop. And I was like, wow, okay. So off I went. If you like quilting or using quilting weight fabric, you will be spoilt beyond choice. Phenomenal. They had all the haberdashery that you could want as well. There was a whole dressmaking section, which I thought was a really good range of prices and variety of products. Things I hadn't seen anywhere else as well. And then they had a whole section with long arm machines and someone was quilting on a long arm machine. That was amazing to see. Then I turned around and realised I'd missed a bit of the dressmaking fabric. They had boucle, yeah. French terry. So of course I then took myself upstairs where they had another whole section of quilting uh, fabrics, including a good selection that were 35% off. And then I had a little peek through to a huge workshop space where people were doing workshopping. So I didn't take a video of the people in there, but there was a workshop going on and what a dream place to do a workshop because you can go and get what you need if you don't have what you need <laughs> oh i well i was speechless and i couldn't believe the find and thank you to the person who said why is this place not spoken about more people should be specifically taking trips to go to the little shop of fabrics and it's in a lovely part of kent smarden is very small but you've got places like ashford and canterbury and uh, Tenterden and Maidstone so you can easily tie it in and there's pubs and things all around and not far from the motorway I bet you want to see what I got try to be really conscious try to be really thoughtful so let's start with a little remnant a lovely sort of forest green piece of needle cord and I picked this up because making waistcoats gilets I thought this would be perfect not huge no it's just that doubled over but that's a great piece to have isn't it and then this gorgeous lilac denim this i think from memory was six pound fifty a meter and i think if i remember rightly it is it has some stretch yeah it's got a little bit of stretch to it so i got two meters because i thought that either a jacket or a pair of how gorgeous is that it's really lovely it's not overly stiff and then they had the most lovely green and uh, french terry and i wanted to sew a pair of green french terry joggers last year and the one i got was not the quality i was hoping for it wasn't hugely expensive but this quality so it's got the nice loop back on it and it was lovely quality and again it wasn't ridiculous i think it was terry oh i got one and a half meters that was a bit more expensive it was 14.99 a meter but still not ridiculous the violet denim was six pound 80 a meter oh i got myself some new overlocker needles as well and some boucle look at this color this boucle was £12.50 and I got one metre because I thought that's going to make a lovely sort of jackety jumper. Um, and interestingly, all my colours went really well together. So I was definitely set buying autumn things. And then the last thing I got was some viscous. Look at this, look at that really different to anything i have and that was 5.99 a meter so i got two meters of that gorgeous and if i show you my purchases together look how well they go together look so it's like a little collection there like you need to go there i know i'm saying this about all the places i'm finding but it's because it's true there are all these hidden little places that are worth a day trip rather than constantly shopping online. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't shop online. 
and I'm not saying we shouldn't small, support small businesses online but there is something about going to a real shop and really feeling things so if you're looking for a day trip out you could definitely do Tenterden and Smarden in one day or if you're going on a visit to Kent you could easily plot some of these places in together so what a find the little shop of fabrics is so thank you so much for that recommendation people are starting to recommend places beyond kent which is great as well because i think this tour is going to take me beyond kent and i'm going to keep it going as long as you're loving it so please do leave me a comment to let me know which bits you're enjoying if there's any place you know that you think i should go which parts of it you love as well um because i'm really enjoying finding these places and sharing them with you and this is all a surprise to me even places i've been before things are very different now that i'm going back so where next i'm planning it i'm organizing it and i can't wait to share that with you each one of these is different because i am trying to sort of enjoy the whole experience of it as much as i can and uh yeah, see you again soon.